Hello everyone and welcome back to City Building Edition for Age of Empires 4. Now we already played as the English and the Holy Roman Empire and this time we're looking at a very special civilization and that is the Chinese. Now with the Chinese we're going to build now here a big city. There is no battles or anything like that. We're just having a look at all the buildings and tax there is and the Chinese have a lot of very special buildings and a lot of special buildings in general. So let's just get cracking here with the very early pre-feudal age where we are right now oh first mistake actually i should not say feudal age because the chinese don't have the feudal or imperial age nope they do have the dynasties right so we're starting here in the tang dynasty that we can see right now that gives us the bonus right away scouts gain 30 percent line of sight and then we continue towards the other dynasties and we do get some bonuses here if we build both landmarks for each one of these eras then as always we're starting our little village construction here with a nice little house and also over here with the lumber camp. Now, another speciality of the Chinese is they're building their houses much faster than their counterparts. Also, every building that we see here generates money. For example, the lum lumber camp here builds, generates plus 100% tax while within the influence of the Imperial Academy. Also, we have the Imperial Officer or Official, unique to the Chinese, and this is an economic support unit with no combat cap capability, will automatically gather tax from buildings, can be tasked with improving a building's efficiency really cool so once this one has been built he's going automatically to all of these buildings collecting tax and producing us gold as always we're laying the foundation for our economy i'm going to build a few windmills here one is by the berry bushes the other one is by the hunting grounds over there and we also have now the gold vein here with the mining camp that we're using i would also like to chop down all of these woods here to have room for a bit more space the chinese need most or need a lot of space for their city much more than the holy roman empire or the english for example so be sure to have enough building space around your city as we can see also our imperial official is now going to these buildings here and collecting money and well turning it in then again this is a nice bonus there on top of it it is time to advance to the next era or the next well the next age of feudal age or the next dynasty for that we have two options the barbican of the sun and the imperial academy and once again you need to decide what do you want to do or specialize your city in defensive um, or military uh, specialization or economic landmark and economic specialization. The Barbican of the Sun fires a long-ranged hand cannon and adds arrow slits while Garrisoned offers vision into stealth forests. And the other one is the Imperial Academy with nearby buildings generate 100% more tax gold. That is really cool. So we're going ahead and building this one right here in the center because we're going to have then a lot of other buildings around it that produce taxes and my officials will then just collect all the money for me. After a bit of time, there we have it, a new age begins and with that we have the Imperial Palace with a very nice courtyard there as well. And this one is now boosting it. We also get a special tag here, the Imperial Examinations increases the maximum amount of gold carried by Imperial officials from 20 to 40. Let's also just research this one here, it's really cheap as well. Now, it wouldn't be the Chinese if I can't build more buildings than any other civilization. With the Barbican of the Sun, if I build this one now, I do get also my defensive landmark and I do unlock that bonus here. The villager production time is reduced by 35%. This would be a nice option. We also get some upgrades here for our light ranged infantry and the village increases the maximum population by 40. So this is a very nice bonus for an additional landmark. But of course, these landmarks cost. So there would be the, the choice of when do I want to upgrade to those buildings here let's build this one here in the forest as it is a keep and it is increasing or improving the division that we have in forests i'm also building the blacksmith now right here so this is a building that we need to build for example with the holy roman empire we would not need to build a blacksmith here we do need it um and this unlocks then all the upgrades for our infantry and for our ranged units and our siege units once again so the bloomer increases the melee damage and of all non-siege units by plus one this is increasing the armor this is increasing the damage of all non-siege units and buildings from ranged damage and this is armor of the ranged units this one here melee and ranged infantry can construct the siege towers and battering rams on the field very important and powerful attack here because we can then build ad hoc 
um, siege units uh, with our melee units and also the military academy reduces the time it takes to produce infantry, cavalry, siege and transport units by 25%. It does not affect religious units. This is the blacksmith with the Chinese. However, it's really interesting because we should build it closer to the Imperial Academy because the blacksmith is getting us some taxes. And since it is now getting boosted, it's producing twice as much taxes. It's actually getting quite busy now for that official here to do his job. So I'm going to train a few more of them. Now, we have also finished at the same time the Barbican of the Sun. We do get some vision around us now. And with that, we have entered the Song Dynasty. That is now providing us the additional production time reduction by 35% for my villagers. And it also increases the maximum population of 40 with the village building. Speaking about the village building, it is here in the feudal age village building unique to the Chinese. And it's providing 40 pops to my whole civilization. So also looking rather nice. Now it is time to advance to the next era. In this case here, we do have the option between the Imperial Palace and the Astronomical Clock Tower. As Chinese, we're probably going to build both of them. Let's start with the Astronomical Clock Tower, acts as a siege workshop and produces siege engines with 50% additional health. Over here we can build it. It's a rather small building as opposed to the Imperial Palace that is rather big. And a new age begins with that. Very nice that we have it. And this is just a normal siege workshop now. So there is these units that we already have in the other city building where I've also been showing them. So the clock tower springle, they're being called a bit different here. Effective at taking out high value targets at long ranges, fires after quickly setting up. This one here is the clock tower nest of bees. And I'm going to show them actually in, in a second there once I can build them. I just want to show the special unit or the special technology to the Chinese. That is the reload drills, reduces the load times of bombards by 33%. The reusable barrels reduces the cost of nest of bees by 25%. So we can spam them a bit better, I guess. And the pyrotechnics increases the range of gunpowder units by 20%. And this is actually pretty powerful. Now, here in the mountains, we've just finished the monastery, a really beautiful building. And this one is generating, oh, well, well, training us the monk. The support unit, nothing special about this one. Picks up relics, brings it back to generate some gold and heals friendly units. It's the same as in every other city. There we have also the herbal medicine, increases the healing rate of these units. The piety increases the health of religious units. And the tithe barns, relics placed in the monastery provide additional food, wood, and stone every minute. What I really like is that now all four of my four tax officials are busy going around and collecting taxes. I think the Chinese uh, cities are looking really lively thanks to this beater. Ooh, we finally have some room here in the center to build the Imperial Palace right next to it. I especially also love that these buildings nicely, um, well, you know, accomplish each one of these. So here with the courtyards, with the hedges that we have around it. Imperial Palace. And this is a really cool special technology. The Imperial Spies re reveals locations of enemy villagers. So if I press this one activated, I could now see all the villages of the enemies. This is a very interesting rush strategy. If you want to play it fast and safe, you don't need to have a scout to find the enemy. You can just build this one here and Im immediately reveal all the villages of the enemy. And you can also see where they're gathering and well, where to strike first. With that, we've also entered the Yuan Dynasty. Villages, officials, military units gain 15% speed. Really powerful stuff there. And with the Yuan Dynasty, we also get one special building that is the Granary, um, unique to Chinese. Villages can drop off food at this building, improves the farm gather rate of nearby villages by 15%, and it generates taxes each time a resource is being dropped off. Um, we could also place this one now just behind our market. We already have some fields close by that we can place here then. Um, and every time someone is dropping it off, well, we generate some money out of that. Let's enter the last era, the Imperial Age, with the last two landmarks. We have the Great Wall Gatehouse, but that we need to repair stone walls first and the Spirit Away. All buildings can create previously achieved dynasty units. Buildings near this landmark produce dynasty units at 30% cost, at minus 30% cost. So this I should probably have where I have my barrack stables and stuff like that. On this small island, that's not really possible. And since it's a religious building, let's just have this one near the monastery over there for now to show it off and to enter the last era. 
And with that, we enter the last age and the highest age there is in this game. The Imperial Age opens up the university building. There is nothing really new about this other than the ancient techniques unique to the Chinese increases the gathering rate of villages by plus 5% for each dynasty achieved. So if I build this one here, we do get a whopping bonus of 20% on all my villagers. Gathering rate especially useful in the end game. Other than that, we have the elite army tactics, increases health of melee infantry by 10% and the damage by 10%. The incendiary arrows increases damage of ranged units by build of on buildings by 20%. We do have biology, cavalry gets 20%, geometry, trebuchets and rams get 30% damage and the court architects increases the health of all buildings by 30%. Now it is time to build our defensive structure, the stone wall. And with that, a very special landmark that is the Great Gatehouse. And with that, we have also achieved now the Ming Dynasty, the last dynasty of the Chinese. Military units gain 10% health. And in addition, we unlock the Pagoda, with, which can house relics and level 4 grenadiers. Last but not least, we have the monument the, or the wonder that we can still build and carve of the emperor. There it is, a beautiful big building. Once again, it's a lot of space. And this one, well, basically brings us the victory if it isn't being destroyed in the next 10 minutes. So another very viable strategy if you don't want to go about conquesting your enemy. We still have a bit of space here that we could utilize for some additional houses right next to that wall. And this actually ends the city building aspect of the Chinese. I think they have one of the most unique city building in this game. Um, lots of buildings, lots of space that this one needs. Um, and then I just want to show off at the end the special units of the Chinese. We have the elite fire lancer, so that's a light melee cavalry. It is very, very aggressive. Charges deal extra area damage. It can charge as its special ability. It's effective raiding unit against buildings and siege engines, but it's very weak in melee combat. We do have the elite palace guard, a heavy melee infantry unit, and with a very nice spear there to that. A tough infantry, it is very heavily armored, countered by crossbowmen, knights and lancers. We do have the elite Suge Nu, a light ranged infantry unit there as well. High rate of fire, in effect against ar armored units. And then we have the clock tower nest of bees. Remember that we built in the clock tower over here, the astronomical clock tower. Um, and this one here is an innovative field weapon capable of firing a barrage of rockets. Good area effect against units especially. Has the slowest movement speed though and weak if surrounded. That's it. That's the whole Chinese civilization in Age of Empires for all the buildings, their attacks and their units. I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned.